Hello, and welcome to Bloomingdale's On Screen. I am Justin Berkowitz, the fashion director for Men's here at Bloomingdale's. And we're coming to you live from Studio 59 on our 59th Street New York City flagship. We're so excited for you to join us for this event as we celebrate the beginning of the happiest time of year with the launch of our latest carousel. Some of may, you may know the Carousel Bloomingdale's pop-up shop, which is driven by culturally relevant themes, which merchandise hand-selected gifts from our guest curators in collaboration with the Bloomingdale's fashion office. This season's theme is Find Your Happy Place, which transports shoppers to a special elevated escape with finds inspired by the travels of our curators. As a reminder, we would love to have hear from you throughout the event, so please throw us any questions in the chat and we'll try to address them live at the end. Now, let me introduce our curators. They are editors, tastemakers, and global travelers, and now each at the helm of their own cult status publications, YOLO Journal and William Brown. Please join me in welcoming Matt Rannick and Yolanda Edwards. Applause, applause, studio applause. Hi, Justin. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks for having us. I Thank think, you for um, being here. I think I've already found my happy place behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for having me here. Um, but more of that later, I'm sure. Uh, so Matt and Yolanda, you guys are incredible travelers. Can you tell us a little bit about just sort of how travel inspires you in finding great gifts and how this sort of came together with you uh, picking out some great things for us at our shop? I think that whenever we're on the road, we're, we're just sort of at our most curious. We're like outside of our everyday life. And, um, and so we're super open and we just love finding things and where, wherever we are, if that's foreign travel, if that's like, you know, just a sort of back country road in Pennsylvania, <laughs> whatever it may be. So we have a shopping we, problem, first of all. Yeah. So, Don't we all? Yeah. I mean, and I think a lot of it comes from this really selfless place where we love bringing stuff back um, to share with friends who didn't get the opportunity to go to place X, Y, and Z, primarily so they don't hate us. But we, you know, if it's a bottle of wine or if it's a great find or it's a terrific scarf or it's like, you know, we, we kind of like to bring that back into our life. Um, and that's why it was so great to do this with Bloomingdale's because it was so wonderful to kind of bring some of our favorite people and finds into mm -hmm. the um, into Happy carousel. Place yeah. carousel. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And I think we're lucky enough to have a great little clip of you guys who are shopping the shop for us um, and experiencing some of the great items that we have in store. Uh, so we'll cut to that now. Here we go. Hi, I'm Yolanda Edwards. And I'm Matt Moranek. And we're here at Bloomingdale's at the Happy Place carousel. Where there are amazing gifts to give and get. One of the things that I was really excited to bring into the Happy Place curation is some of our finds from around the world that really feel like you're giving the gift of travel. Speaking of travel, this is what I think is such a great uh, asset to any travel wardrobe that acts as that all-purpose travel jacket. It's also one of those things that looks great, super casual. You throw a tie on or a turtleneck and still feel like you're kind of dressed up enough. One of my favorite hotels in the world is the Hotel El Pelicano. And this scarf is the Pelicano Hotel scarf for the traveler in your life, or if you just are somebody who wants a really deep sleep. This is just the most luxurious, cashmere, beautiful eye mask is just a dream. Hint, hint. Okay, so I am tote obsessed. And this is our friends at Apollos and they did this collaboration with me and Bloomingdale's with the William Brown Target. This is the perfect vessel to put all your shopping in once you've left Bloomingdale's. This is a reversible blanket and it has my little Target logo on it. I personally hint, love receiving these. Um, and also, by the way, there's an amazing book uh, in, in stock here done by an incredible photographer and author. Who? Me. There's one more thing I want to show you. So. What every man should have in their life is a really, really good robe. These we did with Paul Stewart. These are made in New York on Madison Avenue. This color combination we came up with together. And these, again, are in limited supply here at Bloomingdale's. So I better get one. I'm super excited about these huge stockings. For me, the, the most fun is giving somebody a huge stocking that's just filled with all the, the small little finds. Normally they are stuffed to the gills and overflowing, so this is finally the correct size for Yolanda. I'm uh, this so holiday. excited. 
So our friend Ann Mashburn, she made these amazing little bracelets, one size fits all. I think a good benchmark for giving gifts is thinking about, would I want this myself? And that's how I approach it, and I would hope the people in my family would approach it the same way. What do you think, Yolanda? Yolanda? Oh. Uh, so Matt and Yolanda, you guys are entertaining experts, and we know you both love a great cocktail. So lucky me, I get to have a wonderful experience with the two of you. I think you're making a couple of drinks for us tonight. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you're making an old fashioned, I believe. Yes. And Yolanda, gin martini? A gin martini. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, Matt, we're going to have you make uh, the martini first. We'll do a little taste testing and enjoy them together. You want the martini before the old fashioned? Whichever you would have. Whichever Can we start? Recommend. We'll start with the old fashioned because I'm actually going to make Yolanda make the martini. Ah, if, okay. that's, if that's okay. Yes, that's I can okay. make a martini. We're, we'll see. I can. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, t we'll see t right now. But, you know, I, I mean, a lot of people know my love affair with the Negroni, which is a deep, long love affair. But I think as the weather gets colder, I do gravitate to um, brown spirits, so bourbons and ryes and whiskeys and stuff like that. And the Old Fashioned is terrific because it's, like most of my favorite drinks, under three ingredients or, you know, three is my max. So um, is best, is I think simple. I'd like to celebrate the ingredients. I don't, I don't need them all watered down or kind of layered with other flavors. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to make you an old fashioned, if that's OK. Awesome. I'm okay. super excited. So I think the, the drink is only as good as the glass. I mean, really, I, I mean, sure, <laughs> you could make this in a, mar, mar, in a mason jar. But I, I honestly, truly love Baccarat glasses or something when you drink. A drink out of them, the weight of them, I just think they're sexy and they just make the drink better even if you're a lousy bartender, which you'll, you'll be the judge. Okay. <laughs> I have no doubt that you are not. So we will start, like you can make a simple syrup, but I just think it's like one more complicated step. So if you have sugar cubes, these are a perfect size, or if you have bar sugar or plain white sugar, I will take either a little bar spoon of it or um, confectionery sugar and then not worry about making simple syrup, which is a kind of a pain in the butt. So I'll just add one sugar cube to that. And then we have some straight up, pronounce it. <laughs> Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters. We had a little talk about this earlier. Yeah, <laughs> I bumble that every single time. <laughs> it's a super tough word. It's a tough word and I'm under a lot of pressure, so. And then I, <laughs> and, and then I think a little dash of orange bitters is really nice. And then you muddle that. This is a muddler, which basically means you just crush up the sugar with the bitters in the bottom of the glass. Now, if you're lucky enough to be in a sexy bar situation like we are right now, they've prepared an absolutely spectacular chunk of ice. Wow. Which I'm using my hands to serve you. And then we're going to take, uh, in this case, we're going to use some rye. And I'm going to use two ounces, a very generous two ounces of rye, and pour over the cube. Isn't that pretty? And disinfecting. So and exciting. disinfecting, like there's no danger I think here. We're good. I think we're just going to spin this to kind of incorporate the bitters and the sugar and make all that goodness happen. Now, would you ever shake it up? Would you ever shake one of these drinks? There's always that stirring. You know, I love a shake in Manhattan. I got so much crap for shaking a Mar uh, Manhattan when we did this little video. And people are like, you have to stir it and you have to stir it. I always feel this way, this way about drinks. Make it the way you like it. If you want to shake it, if you want to spin it, if you want to just pull gin out of the freezer and make a martini, right. I really think, I, I don't that. think and there's, and what's, there's no yeah, rules. What's easy, nice. what you have. Yeah. If, you, if you want like a professional point of view of this stuff, go to a professional <laughs> and get this for done. Sure. Like I just like at home to get from A to Z as quickly as possible. I love that. And you're, you are a professional for this evening, which is what we're so excited well, about. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, someone's on the line. Ah. Did that's a takeout <laughs> order coming in? Um, should I answer that? Your cocktail orders are coming through quick. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's, 50 nice. Um, we're actually closed right now. We're doing a drink demonstration in a live video that you've just interrupted with pure pleasure. If you want to stop by for a drink, um, you're going to have to do it another time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right now. That's okay. All right, you should tune in. See ya.
<laughs> they wanted to know if we were open. Oh, I love it. Okay. Okay, so um, now we have a perfect diluted drink. I think they're calling back. Now you have your choice. We could either go with a, with a peel of orange, which I think is really nice, or we have these brandied cherries. I think I'll go brandy cherries. Yeah, I kind of was leading you yeah. into the brandy cherries. Maybe a little easier than having to do the peeling right now. And there you go. And that's mm, it. Wow, so that's so beautiful. Super and simple. Beautiful. Should I give it a little taste? Yeah, you should taste yeah. it. Ooh, mm, strong, but very good. Well, as it should be. As it should be. So we are now, Yolanda's now going to make um, us two gin martinis. Absolutely. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Okay, so I I love this equipped bar for the record. So <laughs> Who's all right. the cocktail maker at home generally speaking? Matt are you usually driving the bar, or Yolanda are you? I mean I Yolanda would say Yolanda usually drives what drink it is. Okay. Right. But when it comes to a martini at home, I usually just I mean I don't do a stirred, so this is going to be a fun experiment for me. It'll be and exciting what, for us all. Yes, and what I usually do is I like to have the, uh, the gin frozen, and then just put like a little touch of vermouth into a glass, and then just the gin straight in and a twist. But um, but I am expanding my horizons, and now I'm going to do a stirred. A stirred. Martini. So we're going to we're us. going to make a very dry. Gin martini. Yeah, we like so, dry. So we we have some dry vermouth, and it, that gets just a little splash. Like just a little, like the essence. Now I know sometimes some people go straight More? into the glass and then pour it out. Okay. You guys recommend into the. I think when we stir them, I like the ice dilution with the. Got it. Within there, I think you know. Again, we like to get to our cocktails as quickly as possible. I like that in the hole. So good. this normally is just in the fridge, and the gin is usually in the freezer. So it's just like splash, squirrel, dump, <laughs> pour of gin, twist of lemon, basta. Decompress. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, we're gonna make two. So give. Um, we're, we like to eyeball this at home. We don't really like to measure it. So give us. The, the amount that you think is correct for two glasses. Okay, you're gonna tell me, because I'm sure, like, <laughs> I think you should keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I think going. too much is never enough. Yeah, so they're big here. glasses. Woo, okay. Okay, that's probably good. <laughs> All, All right. right, so now you start, start stirring. stirring. So in the meantime, I'm gonna step over here and grab two chilled Martini glasses, which are really nice. And look at how frosty those are. Yeah, that, yeah. and we keep, we keep we all always. our glasses in the freezer. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that awesome. comes from the Duke's Bar in London, where with, you know that makes one of the best martinis in the world. Everything is frozen. All the glasses, no, all the glasses come out um, frozen, and I just think it's such a nice way to, to drink yeah. the martini. Absolutely. I do you think guys I'm done. spirits in the freezer as well? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, okay. yeah, but yeah. But really not the just, vermouth. Yeah, just, just the gin. gin. Just the gin, yeah. yeah. Okay, you're probably good there. Okay. So here is the possible clumsy part. <laughs> I when, have total faith in you. When okay. you pour that. Uh, I got it, okay. I got it. Okay. And I'm gonna get a lemon. You're gonna do the twist? Yeah. Okay. Come on, I'm very impressed. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. These are amazing glasses. If it were me doing this, we would have gin all over the bar. <laughs> or broken glass. Or broken glass, you know. So I will okay. um, do the, where is the peeler? Okay, I'll do the, we like a twist. I mean, actually, very rarely do I use olives. I just think the, there's something nice about the, the citrus with this. So uh, we have one of our first questions from the audience, actually. Go. So you were just making an old fashioned right before this, right? Yeah. Uh, we used rye in that drink. Do you have a particular favorite? Um, I actually think the rye that we used, which was, where did it go? Is it the Rittenhouse? It's right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse rye is so nice, and it's 100 proof, which is really terrific for just getting you out of the gate fast. Yeah. Like, I think it's really, really <laughs> Knocking nice. Knocking you on your... On your exactly. tuchus. I'll mm -hmm. have that knife. This isn't really okay. working. I, I also, I like whistle pig. Okay. I, you know, I, and I also like just kind of old school, you know. I, I had a friend of mine in college that said, drink any bourbon that had the word old or ancient in it. Mm. And, you know, old granddad, old yeah. granddad, old crow, ancient age. And he's pretty right. Like, I don't think you need to spend a fortune on it. Okay. Just get the best quality that you can afford. Very good to know. Now, this um, peeler 
is the one challenge that we've had here. <laughs> and um, that is the one extra step that involves a little bit of work in our drink making this yeah, evening. Yeah, maybe we should run down to the carousel shop and pick up some barware. We absolutely down. have some, for sure. Maybe Yolanda, while I got Matt it. is oh, we our got it. can you tell me a little bit about your wonderful magazine, Yolo Journal? OK, so Yolo Journal. Um, um, I'll you hold up if you'd like to. Sure. Your call. OK. Not a QVC moment. Not a QVC moment. Um, so I started YOLO <laughs> Journal um, in summer of 2019, and um, I'm now on my fifth issue, which comes out in a couple of weeks. And it's basically Congratulations, first thank of all. That's you. amazing. Thank you. And it's a, um, a travel lifestyle publication that's really focused on beautiful imagery and, like, really the, the idea is to just transport you and, and kind of make you just feel somewhere else, so, Amazing. which I think we all need. We do. Now. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very thank much you, for the drink. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Dells. Let's see how there. she did. Let's see. Mm. That's really good. Mm. Yeah. It's really okay. Passes muster. Pass yeah, it. maybe Pass this it. is my new technique. You'll yeah. be stirring from now mm -hmm. on. Maybe you can get a job here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are already good at answering the phones. Yes. So. Uh -huh. I think we are the, the dream team. You <laughs> absolutely are. Yeah. And speaking of dream teams, uh, you also have a magazine. Yeah. Or a publication, I should say. Yeah. Can you it's tell a, us a little bit about it? It's a magazine. Yeah. You know, I, cut, I grew up just being in love with magazines. I moved to New York as a young, kind of snot-nosed photographer. Matching very well with the mm -hmm. blazer on the cover. Thank this you was your much. first your first edition? Th yeah, this was the first one. And, um, you know, I just loved magazines. And I was navigating, you know, every aspect of the production of them. And then later, um, you know, I started as a photographer. And then I always preferred the idea behind the assignment rather than actually executing the assignment. And that got me into this idea of being called what I didn't even know what that was at the time, which was an editor, and like thinking about concepts and ideas. And then as I navigated a lot of legacy publishing, I just felt like, where was that one magazine that spoke to the whole version of myself, the one that was like, you know, had a bit of food and had a bit of car and had style, not fashion, and like, without having to buy four magazines, where was the one magazine? Yeah. So as we watched that world dramatically change and you know, that we've all fell in love, like why I fell in love with magazines, I felt like we need to keep this going. I, I need to ma at least give a try at making this thing mm -hmm. because we're probably- Because we love it. We love it and, yeah. I, and I thought like, I'm probably not alone. Was, is not. what I was thinking. Well, and I think we agree with you. I mean, one of the reasons that we were so excited to have you guys come work with us is that you are immaculate editors. Uh, we you. have this special place where we can curate uh, beautiful gifts. Um, and I think we're really excited to have your edit or your curation, you know, choose your own word. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit about some of the products that you guys are excited about. Uh, maybe, Yolanda, you want to talk for a couple? Um, sure. So um, some of the things we're super excited about are um, we got to work with friends like Ann Mashburn, um, who's one of our favorite people. She and Sid Mashburn are just yeah. like... <laughs> Talk about dream teams. I mean, Seriously. they're the best. And, um, and so Ann did these really great uh, bracelets yeah. that are lovely. And, um, and also um, some other accessories, some that um, are uh, a beautiful bag. And, and Sid did something as well. Some card but, cases, I think. Lots of cute leather goods, yeah. great tote. Easy, Good great, smalls, as we really like great Good smalls, gifts. great Good gifts. gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to you, ship. You don't have to know their size, anyone's size. Exactly. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Love exactly. That. Very one size fits all. And then, um, yeah, it was just great to uh, bring in people who, there are a lot of things in the store that, um, that don't, you would never have seen them in the States before. So it was really wonderful to have mm -hmm. this opportunity to bring in all of these people that we've, met and discovered um, from around the world. And I just think it's amazing to bring them into the Happy Place Carousel and, and, and give them this platform and introduce them to this, this new audience. We're excited, too. I think one of the other things I love that you brought in was uh, these beautiful gowns by Lisa Corti. Could you oh. tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, so Lisa Corti is one of my favorites. So she's, she is a, um, it's, she's actually not Italian. She is, um, uh, she was raised in Ethiopia. Maybe she, she's a very interesting background, and sh her she gets everything made in India. But there's there's just amazing amazing kurtas. Um, 
I've never seen her stuff here in the States. Um, and, and so to be able to have those kind of things here that we can actually yeah. buy in the States, it's amazing stuff for entertaining. It's great for gifting because again, it's like the kurta is a, the very forgiving. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like almost one size fits all. Yeah, <laughs> if you definitely did the overindulgence in the COVID period, perfect. <laughs> very, very forgiving. Um, so I don't know. I just I always feel like for me holiday and evening is about like the cocktail the changing your look like I'm a uniform person. I'm always in like navies and grays and blacks, but then at night on the weekend, I want to put on like a little caftan -y thing. Yeah, yeah we always totally. dress for cocktails and I think it's nice. It's an elegant ritual like even when we're when we're away in our, our house in upstate New York like there's always a, a closet full of like fun stuff to wear, like some old black tie, some blazer, yeah. some dress, some caftan, whatever. And you know, one of the, my our I, I, actually the place we met and had drinks in yeah. we, you know in Florence, going to PT and navigating that kind of men's world. That's where we got this opportunity to meet the, these guys at a hundred hands. I was going to ask who makes this. It's yeah, gorgeous. and and you know that's. I had no idea who they were or what, but we just kind of gravitated not only to the people, um, but to what they were doing in such a clever way. So, and for me, it was like the fine tuning that kind of classic American menswear. And I love an overshirt. I love traveling with a quote unquote safari jacket, the buttons, the bu you know, bucket po uh, button pockets, your passport doesn't fall out through security. You could throw all you know, your, you know, gum, lip balm, whatever. And these guys um, collaborated with me to kind of come up with an interpretation of that, as well as some shirting. And I love blue and chambray, and I just think it's always a part of my travel arsenal. Is yeah. like blue shirt, white denim, some travel jacket. Well, I think we're also living in a moment where timeless style is really important. We're thinking yeah. a little bit more about what we're buying, and I think it's so wonderful to be able to speak to these objects that are incredibly well made, have a neutral color palette, and can last mm -hmm. for a really long time. Forever, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think you guys did a really great job of bringing some other things like that into the shop. Matt, I know you've got a couple of other favorites if you want to tell us about them. Well, I love um, Johnston's like cashmere, and, and he, about, I don't know, five years ago, we did this trip to Scotland, mm -hmm. which was selfishly motivated to go to Harris and just buy lots of tweed. <laughs> and, and then we, we detoured um, to Johnston, and we went to the mill, and it was just like, I don't know, just kind of caught in time, and this amazing cashmere, and these beautiful fabrics, and beautiful wool um, and we you know I, I kind of like got realigned with those guys and we said well, let's let's do some things that again one size fits all yeah you know I we have a slight blanket obsession at our house like there's always a box full of like something to put around your shoulders you know yeah. um, and then scarves and what I think is incredibly glamorous are these cashmere eye masks yeah. and socks I, I'm obsessed with the ones we have mm -hmm. in the shop they're, they're so good yeah. they're great don't yeah. throw them in the dryer <laughs> <laughs> top tip yeah 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 um, you also have a book that came out recently that we have in the shop I have a little book that came out it's the follow-up to a man his watch uh, and it's a man in his car and um, it's this kind of, it you know it, that both of those books are about the emotional connections with men and object in like little machine little machine and big machine and um, that was published by artisan this year and um, it's available here I, I also think that there is an emotional connection through that courses through all of the things that we picked it's like very um, you know, a hundred hands is a husband and wife team, and Mashburn said Mashburn, yeah. husband and wife team. Like, there's so many. We really love the connecting to real people who really make this the way yeah. they've always done, or like Johnston. I mean, w the way you talked about oh. that, it's like to it's cotton time. Yeah, nothing's changed. Absolutely, it's just yeah. like they do really cool new color palettes and collaborations. But I just love that um, it's really re connecting to the mm. people who are making these things yeah. and yeah. it's yeah. really nice. We've actually got a copy of your book here, which we'll, we'll put loving, lovingly on the bar. I think the cover design is absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and a great, uh, great price point. Um, <laughs> no, that was a labor of love for about almost two years where I traveled around the world and schlepped this big giant 30 by 30 backdrop um, and met incredible characters with great car stories first mm. um, that just happened to have incredible cars. 
And when I finished that, that bag with that backdrop is now sitting in our barn in upstate New York. And I think the ritual would be to burn it. <laughs> I'm just I, like the last thing You're I want to, yeah, I'm just so over it. But it was, um, it was a really fun journey with that um, because it did bring me um, to so many incredible places with such great stories. Awesome. One of the other things I'm obsessed with that you did are these amazing totes with your logo on them. I love Can you talk it. to us about that a little bit? I am, I am totes for tote. <laughs> I, I love totes so much. Like, no offense to backpack wearers out there, but like, I am at an age where I don't wear a backpack. Yeah. I don't want to wrinkle my clothes. I, don't, I love totes. And we love the guys at Apollos. We love their kind of social, that we, love their, we love their political statement of where these are being made and who are making them, as well as the product. And, um, and one of the things I love about the Apollos bag is that it actually stands up by itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, it I mean, for, for everybody who's a New Yorker, like, you know that you just want that thing to stand on the subway in between and your legs totally. and not be falling over. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that. And yeah. then they, for this, they embroidered um, the Target, um, which is Matt's Yeah, logo, yeah. So. lean down. I apologize to our, our guests in the audience, but we've got one here. Actually, I think they're amazing. Hopefully everyone can see them. Um, super cool. Um, and they, they normally silk screen these, so, but, so to do this embroidered I thought was so special. And also, like, I'm not a tall guy, so like the handle length I'm there with you first is time. correct, <laughs> where you're not like walking not around dragging and dragging on the ground, but it's just long enough to throw over a shoulder. Yeah. I think when you live in LA and you have the luxury of just like walking, walking out of your house with a bag yeah. and putting in a car, that's a whole different experience. But if, any, if there's any like commuters out there that are either biking or walking or on subway, that is, it's a, just a great bag. Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. I've used other versions of these in my past and I think they're such great versatile pieces. Now, of course, we have you guys here and we wanted you to come join us for two reasons. Obviously, you're style experts, travel experts, and wonderful curators. You're also entertaining experts. And I think a lot of people are having very different holiday moments this year, right? We can't mm. travel the same way that we normally do, having different experiences. So I think we'd love to hear from you guys what some of your top tips uh, for holiday entertaining this year specifically are. This is Yolanda's wheelhouse. I mean, Christmas for her in terms of how the house is presented, <laughs> the orchestration of things, the choreography. I mean, that, this is her game. Take it away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, what are no you planning pressure. this year? No, no pressure. Uh, we, we do not have our Christmas plan yet. Well, okay. it's complicated because, you know, my immediate family is split across, you know, you know, at least one time zone and in upstate New York. And it's always, tr you know, trying to find a way to kind of get us all together. Like yeah, my daughter, who's, yeah, a, yeah, who's we, an only child, like she wants to be a part of that big familial experience. Yeah. So it's always about how do we negotiate getting everybody yeah, together. I, I yeah, think Chris, sure. uh, I think the holidays for everyone is a negotiation. And so I think, <laughs> it's true. It's I so think true. that's why cocktails are so important in I holidays. Completely agree. Because they're so, I mean, it is, it's a great time. It's a challenging time. So I would say the first thing like, I think identifying like what is going to be the, the easiest way that when people are coming in, um, I mean, I know this year, who knows like what the, the issues are with how many people and whatever. Yeah. But um, with that being said, I think um, it's really nice to kind of identify what's the thing that's like the really low lift for you and to have everything sort of already done and laid out. I mean, that's like, you know, pretty common sense, but the things that I feel like I want to do this year that I have not necessarily done in the past is really, we, we've all had so much more time at home and I think it's really great to be able to kind of go in sort of, it's almost like shopping your closet, but it's mm -hmm. like shopping your cupboard. Oh, I and, love that. And like going into your, into your drawers and like finding the, the, the napkins and the, the things that like you kind of forgot about and, and kind of bringing them all out, looking at them and then saying like, okay, I don't want to do the same table as I did last year. And it, it's like, maybe you just like introduce a new glass and that's like the thing that's like the one purchase. It's like, okay, we're going to have like new martini glasses this that. year or, but it's, um, it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's finding the things that you forgot about and um, making really beautiful tablescapes and 
we that also sort of like thing. we also like tradition and ritual. Yeah. And I don't think we approach it the same way every year. You know, we will drive upstate and go to the local like Boy Scout Christmas tree sale that we buy a tree that's always like too big and too lopsided and you know and then that's that kind of ritual and then one year I had this great idea to like you know channel my inner Martha Stewart and I wanted to put it in a like this like beautiful square planter and then the middle of the night we heard it crash and like all the vintage and like collectible from my grandmother grandma like all the ornaments were just smashed on the floor so I, I really leave that to Yolanda in terms of that but I do think the key part of a holiday for me is about food and beverage, this idea of being together. Um, it doesn't have to be extravagant, it just has to be mm. thoughtful. Yeah. Um, are there any gifts you guys have already have planned to give this year, or things you're thinking about in terms of the special people in your life? I think one size fits all gifts are really great. Okay. And um, We don't know what happened in the last eight months. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so a very no fair assumptions statement. anymore. Everyone's getting anything. everyone's getting subscriptions to William Brown and Yellow Magazine in our family. <laughs> but speak, speaking of that, one um, something we've done with um, the pop up is that um, we do have the William Brown and Yolo, like the um, oh yeah the the complete edition, the so, collector's edition. Yeah. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. So, so that's someone wants cool. to pick up all of the issues. Yeah, they yeah. Can get exactly. them in one place. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. And yeah. we so, don't really that. do that. We it, haven't it, ever under done many, that. We have never done that under uh, any, any circumstance. So it's great to kind of have them all as a little collection, even though I think we're quite young in the, the birth of yeah. this thing. You know, like, um, but it is nice to see them all together. Yeah. I think we're really lucky to have that and lucky to be able to offer that to our customers. I think yeah. the whole point of the carousel is really to provide something that's unexpected and something right. new. Right. Um, and I think we're very fortunate to have you guys be a part of that. Yeah. So I want to say thank you. Thank Pleasure. you for um, having us. And I want to say thank you to everyone else for joining us. Uh, we appreciate having you. Appreciate you joining us for a cocktail. Um, and want to just give you a gentle reminder: everything you saw this evening is available uh, in the Carousel Shop. Um, and please stop by and shop with us through the, the middle of January. We close January fifteenth. Have a great evening and happy holidays. Have a drink and then start shopping. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.